even though it's not strictly on the WJEC syllabus, it is worth spending a little bit of time looking to see how we distinguish between the two enantiomers of a chiral molecule. And in order to do that, we first introduced the kahn ingold prelog or CIP, priorities scheme. Now, this is something that we will use again next week when we're naming different isomers of alkenes. And so it is absolutely not a waste of time learning how to do this. We'll introduce it now and then apply it in a second way. So we're kind of getting a, a double dip for our efforts. Now, the idea of the SIP priorities is you took got an atom that is bonded to other atoms. In our case, we've got a chiral atom that's going to be bonded to four other atoms. When we get to alkenes, we're going to be looking at a, a carbon atom that's bonded to two other atoms. But whichever it is, we need to assign priorities to those groups or the atoms that are bonded to the atom of interest. And the way we fundamentally do that is the atom that's bonded to our interest atom that's got the higher atomic number is the higher priority. So that could be nice and easy. If, on the other hand, the atom that is bonded to your chiral carbon, in this case, if two of them are the same, well, then you just keep working backwards away from the chiral carbon until you find a difference, and you use that difference to assign the priority. And if we see it, multiple bonds just means that an atom counts twice if it's a double bond or three times if it's a triple bond, but we're not going to see that today. So... Always best to teach with examples. Here is that first molecule we looked at um, in the previous slide. The carbon here is bonded to four different groups, otherwise it would be boring, it wouldn't be chiral. What are those groups? We've got a carbon there with a methyl. We've got chlorine, hydrogen, and bromine. Well, what's the highest atomic number here? Bromine. So that's priority number one. What's the next highest? Chlorine, priority number two. Next highest is the carbon of the methyl, so that's number three. And finally, the poor old hydrogen is always the lowest priority. Here's another one. I suggest you pause and practice it yourself. Now you're back, I hope. So first of all, we've got oxygen, carbon, carbon, hydrogen. Of those, oxygen is obviously the best, and hydrogen is the worst. Well, now, how do we decide which carbon group has the higher priority? We look at one of them, the methyl group, and that carbon is bonded to three hydrogens. Okay. We look at this carbon, and it's bonded to two hydrogens and another carbon. So the first bonded atom is a carbon, can't distinguish there, but then as we go, we get hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen here, but this carbon's bonded to a carbon, so thus the ethyl group is the second priority, methyl is the third priority. Look at your amino acid here. Some of you may have heard something called a corn way of doing amino acids. Yeah, you can memorize that stuff, but um, it's just as easy just to use the general rules. So anyway, what do we have here? We have a nitrogen, we have a carbon, we have a carbon and a hydrogen. Again, okay, pause to practice the priorities. Now let's get back. Nitrogen is, of course, the best. Hydrogen is the worst. But now we've got two carbons. How do we decide between them? Well, the methyl is, again, this carbon then goes to three hydrogens. We go to the acid group. The carbon bonds to three oxygens, double bonded oxygen and a single bonded oxygen. So obviously an oxygen here trumps any of these hydrogens there. So the acid group, the COOH group is number two and the methyl group number three. Last example before we discuss why we're doing this. Got a carbon here that's bonded to an oxygen, a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. Obviously, the oxygen is the top priority, but now we have to go a bit further than just these first carbons. Well, methyl, we've already decided, is HHH, and ethyl is HHC, so that means, of course, the ethyl beats the methyl. And then we get to this one here, which is HHO. You got an O there, which is better than a C, and a C is better than H's, so therefore, Four is the methyl, two is the CH2OH, and three is the ethyl. Now, the reason why we assign these priorities is now we can distinguish between the different enantiomers because the different enantiomers have got the groups arranged in a different way. Otherwise, they would be superimposable. Now, the definition we use to distinguish the enantiomers is we take our chiral carbon, we orient it, so we're looking at the lowest group is at the back, 
and then we count the priority, priority one, then two, then three. If we go clockwise, then we call it the R isomer. If we go anti-clockwise, we call it the S isomer. So I'm now going to do a couple of examples for you, assuming that the movies work, that is. So here's what we're doing to distinguish between the different antimers. We'll find the chiral carbon, orient it in our view so that the lowest group is backwards at the back. Count the priorities, one, two, three, in that order. If we had to do clockwise to do that, it's our anti-clockwise, it's S. Let's do a couple of examples. Here's our first molecule from before, for which we've already assigned the priorities. Bromine the top, then chlorine, then methyl, then hydrogen. This is, of course, the flat boring one, as it's a chiral carbon. It's going to have two enantiomers. There are the two. These are just taken from the mirror plane illustration earlier in, so in the, the talk. So this is the one enantiomer. This is its mirror plane. Now let's see if I can get movies to work here, in which I take each molecule, build a model, and then rotate it so that the lowest priority, in this case hydrogen, is at the back. So there's the movie, play it. So we'll start off, you can see it's the right, the correct enantiomer, methyl coming out at you at the top, hydrogen coming out at you at the bottom. Um, of course, we want the hydrogen to go away from us. That's how we're going to orientate it. Yellow, bromine, green, chlorine. So now let's go ahead and rotate. So now the hydrogen is at the back and if I draw out that picture, hydrogen at the back, bromine coming out at us on the left, chlorine coming out at us at the right, methyl coming out at us on the bottom. So the priority was bromine, chlorine, methyl. So we therefore would be going in that direction to go one, two, three. So that is going clockwise. So that is the R enantiomer. Let's go to this one now. It's the movie. Okay, make sure I'm drawing the right model here. There's the methyl at the top, hydrogen at the bottom, both coming out at you. Chlorine, bromine on the bottom, left and right going away from you. When I say at the bottom, I mean going away from you. Excuse me. So let's uh, rotate the movie, getting that hydrogen at the bottom, uh, hydrogen at the back. And there it is at the back quite nicely now. So we'll draw that. Chlorine coming out at you on the left, bromine coming out at you on the right, methyl coming out at you on the bottom. So which direction we got to go to go one, two, three, one, two, three. So there we are going anti-clockwise, okay, giving us the S enantiomer. Isn't this fun? Let's do one more just to demonstrate the funness of it. Here's the second molecule for which I again have already assigned the priorities, oxygen at the top, carbon with the carbon second, carbon with just hydrogen's third, and poor old hydrogen fourth. So again, we're going to be trying to get the hydrogen at the back. There are the two enantiomers that are mirror images of themselves um, demonstrated on a previous slide. First movie, make sure we've got the right picture there. Um, the red oxygen and the yellow ethyl group um, coming out at you in that particular orientation, the methyl and the hydrogen going away from you. So that's nice, the hydrogen's already going away from you. Right now, methyl on the left, hydrogen on the right. So let's go ahead and press play. Don't have to do a whole lot of rotating now, I'm just getting it so it's kind of cute and pretty. Get the hydrogen at the back. Now what we see is coming out at us, oxygen on the top, then ethyl down there on your right, methyl on the left. Which way round do we have to do it? Well, it was oxygen, then ethyl, then methyl, oxygen, ethyl, methyl. We, of course, went clockwise for that. That's, again, the R in enzyma. It's absolutely no correlation at all about the fact that my R in enzymas are the first ones I looked at at each of those. And now, finally, let's look at this one. Again, make sure we're looking at the right thing. We got the oxygen red, ethyl uh, orangey yellow um, coming out at us, top and bottom, and then going away from us, hydrogen methyl, hydrogen on the left, methyl on the right. Obviously not going to have to do too much orientating here. Moving around, there we are, little rotation twirl just for fun. 
Now, of course, if you look at this, you can see immediately how they're going to be different. We had in both cases oxygen at the top, and now you can see, first of all, we had methyl on the left, ethyl on the right. Here we got ethyl on the left, methyl on the right. Which way round we're going to have to go for oxygen, ethyl, methyl? We'll be going that way round counterclockwise. Thus, that is the S enantiomer. Hopefully, that sort of made sense and was fun for you all.